Got us a new video, the elf that saved fantasy anime, or as I like to call it, native isekai. Let's see a video that glazes Furiden. Time is a okay. precious commodity that every one of us takes for granted. Time is something we never truly appreciate until it's already gone. T this shit's starting off so fucking depressing, man. Time is... A really cheesy way to start off this video. I'm yeah. Sure. I know like 10% of you are on the toilet right now just looking for a way to pass time. Are you? Poop. Are you guys? And another 20% of you are probably having lunch when I said that line. Free Run is one of the most popular anime currently airing and is on most people's shortlist for one of the best shows that started mm -hmm. airing last year. The story of a functionally immortal elf girl who truly regretted the time she didn't cherish with the people she was with and has to come to terms with what the passage of time means for her. And it's this emotional crux that almost every video I've seen talking about the show hones in on <laughs> look at all the views on people just glazing up freedom but it's smart right it's a trending topic Even someone like her possesses more time than any of us will ever come close to having they can pass her by just as quickly if she's not careful about it <clears throat> myself maybe included yeah you already made one on and i've gotten to experience more of the story past even what i had initially read in the manga i really think this just scratches the surface of what free run has to offer and the tale it is evolving into that alone would not have been enough what is it evolving into? Is there an actual plot right now? We're getting a lot more action scenes, but right now we're trying to get the first classmates because the overall goal is to go to the north and, you know, reach heaven, as in, like, the... to meet Himmel, right? We got a spell there that we're gonna use. But, like, so far, there has been a lot of detours, and I'm enjoying these detours because they're very action-focused, but is there an overall plot aside from getting... Like reaching heaven and talking to Himel. Enough to keep its throne as the top rated anime of all time. Yes, and look at this, right? Look at the difference in the My Anime list rankings between number two and everything below, right? They're a difference of 0 0.02 or 0 0.01 at best, right? And then Frieden is above. It's at, it's above 0 0.07, by the way, the most updated one. Time for so long. That alone would not have been enough to start its own cultural phenomenon here in Japan. That alone would not have taken one of the most poignant emotional series to come out in years and had. Every single aspect of it looted by so many god- Look, I do- uh, I understand the Ubel fan service, which is just mostly just feed and armpits, but like, the amount of loot art for Fern and Furiren is insane, and I think that it's because they are so reserved, right? People want to loot things that are- that shouldn't be lootable. You know, if, if the character is like fucking Eri Narize from fucking Mushoku Tensei is already showing so much, how many artists are gonna go out their way to do that shit because they can already see it? But like characters like Frida and Fern that are always just covered up, right? I feel like some people find it more hot that they are covered up, therefore they wanna seek out more NSFW content. I think that is the mindset. Goddamn talented fan artist! Jesus Christ, I thought this was meant to be an emotional show! He did a lot of research, huh? This is an AI Ubel too. He bro did a lot of fucking research right now for this video. No, that was not a complaint. I don't think I fully did the series justice in the video I made two years ago, so I wanted to revisit Free Ren, cause now that the anime is coming to an end, I've seen it evolve from a series with a unique concept and a hard hitting beginning to an all around masterclass in the fantasy mm, genre that Dan seems Ken. to be doing just about everything. A proper old school fantasy adventure adventure, lessons that hit deep, emotional moments, romance, the bloody tuning exams. This show is doing it all. <laughs> the bloody tuning exams, true, and honestly, the tuning exam moments are so fucking hyped, dude. Bloody tuning exams. This show is doing it all, tying it all back to that one thing, time. Because it is time to talk about today's sponsor. Exactly. Raid Shadow Legends. Use your discount code GIGUK for your first 10 pull and now back with the regular scheduled content to get x astra today on the apple or google play store let's get back to free run coming into the free run anime i already knew how hard the beginning episodes were going to hit from my experience with the manga it gave us an interesting perspective of how time moves through the eyes of a long life being and hit like a truck looking for its next isekai protagonist but the big but this is native isekai burger sized question mark was where do we go from here having the story start at the end of another we're not going anywhere though, huh? We're just fucking chilling. We're just straight up just chilling and enjoying these detours. I feel like, again, it's the journey that matters, right? We're not really so focused on the end goal of going to heaven. 
It's just the journey, the different detours, and the shit that we're doing that people really seem to love. Another story is a cool idea, but how do you make that interesting in the long run? I've seen plenty of series that have presented this really cool concept, said what it needed to in the opening episodes, and then Oshinoko. failed to capture the emotional peak we saw at the beginning. <laughs> Zam 100, Komi? statements like, I don't think it's the best show no. of uh, all time. No. I don't even think it's the best show of the year. I would no. argue that it might not even be the best show. Of what, what, what anime is he talking about here? I don't know. Of the season, Frieden, maybe? some viewers of this channel will know that I am never wrong, except when I am absolutely wrong. So let's break down just how wrong I was. Freeran's opening was so strong that it had the Vinland Saga effect on me. Where the, the opening made no sense to me because it was so fucking upbeat and hype. But like the first four episodes, it's an existential crisis about everyone around you dying because you're almost immortal, right? But the opening is so hype and upbeat, it's like, what the fuck? The prologue was so good in its own bubble, I forgot that was what it was meant to be. A prologue, a story that gives us the introductory baseline for the real oversized meat plate of the story to come. What the fuck is up with all people? Really love Frieden and Farron eating huge ass hamburgers, huge ass steaks, donuts, fucking different desserts. I don't know why, but they're so memeable. These characters eating comically large portions of food. But the question remains: where and more do you mimic take fan service that takes place in a world where the main story has already ended. There's this one masterclass where Aaron Sorkin, the writer of A Few Good Men, Social Network, West Wing, talks about intention an obstacle characters need an intention okay. a goal they have to achieve that can't just be a small want but a so what's the intention for freedom to go talk to himil a strong need we need to defeat the demon lord or the world will end but the demon lord's I already beaten need to invent the nuclear bomb or the soviets will do it first and the world will end i need to find a girlfriend before the year ends or i will or the girls will end I won't have anyone to go to prom with and the world will end. The stronger the need for this intention, the better. And to counteract that, you have the obstacle. The thing that prevents the character from achieving what they need to. An impossibly powerful final villain. A time limit to build something that's never been- Do we- do we have an opponent? What's the opponent here? Is the opponent fucking time for freedom? Built before. A man that has- It's not really the demons. Riz. The harder that obstacle is to overcome, the more compelling that journey will be. Break down a lot of TV series and movies to its basic core components, and you'll probably see this framework in action. Watching Free Ren made me realize that barely any of this applies to her journey. She has hmm. a vague intention, retracing her old steps to reach this mythical place that may or may not exist so she can say goodbye to her old party, but it's not something she needs to do. The world's not going to end if she doesn't, and she can still go about her life if she fails. There are some obstacles, a snowstorm that stops their travel for a month, a qualification she doesn't have in order to- A fucking snowstorm. What was the point of that snowstorm episode? It was chill. I think we were talking to, um... What was that guy? The big dude. The the other elf. Craft. Didn't we meet Craft this episode? That was pretty much the whole point of that. Their travel for a month. A qualification she doesn't have in order to pass to a new area. But it's never something you think she can't overcome. And what that means is that instead of obstacles on the journey, you have stops. A little detours. And honestly, these detours are what makes the show good. Everyone just enjoys these random stops, right? In any other anime, you'd be fucking pissed if you made this many fucking stops. Because right now, we're trying to travel to the north to use some fucking magic to talk to Himmel from the afterlife. But it's like, we're taking a million detours. But these detours are the main content. You know what I mean? A lot of stops. It's not even a journey anymore. It's a fucking London bus route. If you've ever watched a show and felt like the pacing was off, or what you're watching feels like, for lack of a better term... <clears throat> Filler. Most I think he just shit on One Piece and, you know, My Hero Academia. Most of the time is probably because the series has spent too much time on a detour that deals with a certain obstacle or something and not progressing towards that final The main plot, goal. exactly. But by admitting any goal that feels immediately urgent, Freeren makes it all about those detours. Some episodes can feel like they can take an hour, and some feel like they can take five minutes. And I mean this in the best of way because it all- <laughs> Some episodes feel like they can take an hour. <laughs> when nothing is fucking happening, it's just random fucking scenes like this, yeah. Uh, people do enjoy these scenes, but then there are episodes like the Aura episodes, right? There are episodes like the fucking Denken episode, where Freedom Breaks the Barrier. Other hype shit like that, where it does feel like, you know, the episode is like only five minutes. Like the most recent one. Five minutes, and I mean this in the best of way, because it always engages you in a different way. You never question whether you're spending too much or too little time in a certain place or a certain side story, and it allows you to just get fully absorbed in the moment. Because, like, no one is complaining that we need to fucking finish this detour now to get to something else. Because that is such an abstract long-term goal that no one really feels like it can be doable right away. 
So we're just doing random detours and people don't get upset at the detours because the detours itself is the main story, huh? It's interesting how Frieden has kind of structured a story like that. And it's in the moment. That the show wants to keep you. This show is all about living in the present. Appreciating the time as it is now instead of regretting the past or being blinded by the future. And what drives this message home so strongly is the characters. Freeran's whole spiel is that she's this long living elf that doesn't really care about what's going on because whatever happens will have a minuscule effect on her overall life but yeah so she'll go fucking leave her friends and say come back and it's like oh it's only been 80 years bro you're almost dead. Strip that all away and you just have a girl that is disconnected from the world around her. The way she acts is reminiscent to the character trope I probably despise the most in anime. What is it? The Kudere. You've the fuck does Gigak have against Kudere's, dude? Recently, I've been enlightening my, um, my anime uh, trope palette, right? Sundere's are just fucking annoying to me. Yandere's, honestly, you guys hype up Yandere's way too much. If you actually had a Yandere girlfriend in real life, I promise you, you would never want one. I think that Kudere's are pretty high tier recently, man. Spe like specifically Kudere's that are degenerate, like Origami Tobichi. Tobichi Origami from Data Life, or like other Kudere's where it's like deadpan, but then got like a really hilarious joke. Or even like Vil Hayes from like Komari, right? I, I enjoy Kudere's recently. What does Giga have against Kudere's, man? I've seen the ones. It's the characters that talk like this. Hello, what are. <laughs> okay, they do all talk like that, though. <laughs> they do all kind of talk like that, though. <laughs> <laughs> Go one more time. Ones, it's the characters that talk yeah. like this. Hello. The what default Kudere voice. Are confusing to me because <laughs> I have the personality of wet cement. So there are a no, they're just a little bit on the spectrum. Nothing wrong with that. Out there that can relate in some way of having a calm personality that gets perceived as being stoic. But all too often, instead of feeling like a human, these characters feel like an robot devoid of all yes. emotions. I do agree that Kudere's do feel like they do feel robotic at times. But I, that's the entire point, right? For them to kind of be stripped of these other emotions. And they're all very soft-spoken and they kind of feel a little bit robotic. But there is a charm there. There is a charm. Fuck, a lot of Kudere's are literally androids devoid of all emotions. And as someone who's introverted and is perceived by a lot of my friends as someone who stays calm. Wait, <laughs> What? <laughs> what? <clears throat> Most of the time, there is nothing I can attach to with these characters. The difference with Free Ren is that she clearly has emotions. She gets happy, annoyed, sad. So emotional Kudere. So Kudere usually, but that is able to show emotions is a difference. And that's why Giga like, appreciates Frieden, huh? Bad and regretful in her own way. She's not emotionless. She's just emotionally distant, which makes absolute sense for the lifespan she has. It's not about her learning what emotions are and feeling things for the first time. It's about her learning why it's important to, to open up moments when you do and being more mindful about the emotions the people around you have. And I mean, that's the whole point of the story, right? Right? That freedom wasn't able to, you know, like I think that she has a lot of regrets with Himmel, right? Because she wasn't able to. The whole story is about how Himmel died. Well, everyone else is dying around her too. But like Himmel is like the main character, where it's like, oh, I didn't know you were into me that way, and it's like, damn, I could, I wish I could have gotten to know you more. So it's like the whole story is about her emotionally kind of opening up as the story progresses through all these different, you know. Uh, these detours where we have all these different flashbacks and reminder of like, hey, remember that scene we did with Heiter or Himmel and all these different things, man? I really feel bad for Himmel, though. God damn. Bro lived his entire life just for her and she didn't even fucking know. And he just giga chatted it out. Bro just fucking went out. Maybe he's a virgin. Who fucking knows? I honestly would believe that Himmel is a fucking virgin, dude. And you don't Just need for to be immortal elf god to be able to relate to that. One of the early scenes that really hit me was when Freeran had a flashback of a party devastated they'd missed this sunrise. And she's like, why the hell do you all care? It's just a bloody sunrise. Oh yeah, but it only happens like every 50 years or some shit, right? But then... Decades later, she has the opportunity to experience that same sunrise with Fern, who miraculously somehow was able to drag her out of bed to see what all the hubbub was about. And then they do. And it's beautiful. Wow. Amazing. Like, yeah, it's just a fucking sunrise, isn't it? <laughs> the fuck did I get up for this shit, Fern? <laughs> but then she finds herself enjoying the experience. Not because she suddenly got some newfound appreciation. Ooh, this Made in Abyss soundtrack playing with freedom moments is kind of hitting. Creation ...of this sunrise, but because she got to share the moment with the people around her that do. And, oh, God damn if this isn't so real. The amount of times I've gone and done something I never would have myself because I've had some mates fucking drag me out when I'd rather be doing nothing but yeah. staying inside playing some dumbass video games. And well, 
you gotta be try to be relatable to your main anime audience. Do you think the main anime audience has friends to drag them out from their fucking desperate, you know, d you know, fucking degenerate, you know, caves? Do you guys have friends that's gonna drag you guys out? Is this a, is this relatable to you guys? It turns out that these I'm sure you guys do. That we still talk about and remember fondly. When Don't say out. no. Come hey, on. Time when we At least lie. And there was a thunderstorm and it was wet and everyone was fucking miserable and then Russell ripped the fattest fucking. But it's like yes, the moment fucking sucked but the shitty times actually turn into nostalgic memories in the future and you kind of appreciate that even though you fucking hated it during the moment part of his life that overpowered the sound of the thunder and i swear to god reverberated the entire bloody tent that was some core cool memory shit right there but beyond yeah. free run you also have fern and stark two people who are not impossibly old like free run is but still have their own troubles dealing with human emotions for the opposite reason because they're the fucking zoomers of the world or <laughs> wait why is he a coomer? I guess he's a coomer for the MILFs, huh? And honestly, Free didn't even be... God, she can't even be a fucking boomer, dude. She's a fucking fossil, right? Whatever the equivalent is. You can tell they lack emotional maturity in dealing with other people. Like, for example, instead of... Emotional maturity, yes. Farron, straight up, is like so socially inept, so emotionally challenged, so acoustic but it makes sense because like she never had to socialize with any other one right as a child she was like an orphan got raised by a heiter had no exposure to other children her age she doesn't know how to act herself so even though she's hard to please and kind of seems annoying i feel it's like very understandable why she's like this. communicating her anger and frustrations in a healthy way fern just bottles it all up and just leaves pouts. everyone else to figure out what's bothering her which she expresses in the most adorable bloody pout face possible it's adorable until you actually have someone like this in real life and that shit just gets fucking annoying. Alright, I'm just saying, if I was there, I'd definitely make the situation ten times worse because I just want to look at her puffy little cheeks and go, Booga booga booga, is someone mad today? <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm even less mature than they are. But it's in that maybe. process of emotionally maturing that we get one of the best romance subplots I've seen in a very long time. Hmm. I do Fern and Stark romance subplot. I do see it happening, for sure, right? Fern definitely is into Stark and Stark... I'm not sure if he's aware of Farron's feelings just yet, but there is something brewing there for sure. I did not get into this type of show for any kind of romance, nor did I expect- <laughs> The boomer fucking Riz here. <laughs> the, it's not the MILF Riz, it's the fucking Gilf Riz, right? As much as the fan I was telling me otherwise, and I just want to gush about it a bit. When what I the fuck? Romance what the fuck was that? Why did you say gush about it and suddenly go to the wet crotch? Nor did I expect what was to this? have one. As what, what, what was this? Hold up, hold up. And I just want to gush about it a bit. When I see romance in anime, especially if it's some kind of romance subplot in a wider story, I often feel like it was just an afterthought and a lot of times can feel really clunky and inorganic. Characters will go about their business for like hmm. dozens of episodes with no indication there's any romantic feelings, sometimes having negative chemistry for the series to suddenly sprinkle in this random scene that- SAO! Kirito and Asuna. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? I feel like what he's describing is exactly Kirito and Asuna. For some fucking reason, they're all lovey-dovey. Even though beginning, they started off fucking rough and there's nothing to indicate why they should be romantically engaged. I'm not wrong. I am objectively correct. And there's nothing you can say to defend SAO the anime. The anime. Not the light novel. The anime in terms of how the romance between Kirito and Asuna formed, right? It was sealed with the fucking near-death experience, but like, I don't know, I, I, I'm just watching that anime right now and I'm like, damn. What the fuck do they have in common other than being like the same age stuck in a video game? The girl realizes she has feelings for the protagonist and it doesn't seem like that friendship kind of feeling, but the feeling she might just want him to canoodle that poodle, if you know what I'm saying. Canoodle that poodle, I'm stealing that! And I'm sitting there being like, alright, I guess it makes sense it's reasons like this that a fan base can have debates and arguments on who they ship with who what fan base can have debates and arguments who they ship with who and at the end of the day you know there's no reason to get so heated on this kind of ship wars right because like take a step back and realize that you're fucking grown ass men arguing about fictional couples in a fucking fictional story about 2d fucking characters that are not real 
There's more important things in life, but some people will go to fucking war about their favorite ship. This character should be paired with this character. And if that's not the case, then you don't deserve to live. That's how the anime fucking fan base kind of operate, dude. They take this shit so fucking seriously because they got nothing better going on for themselves. Two people they want to end up together because in reality, any of these couples could work because the story has not done the groundwork to get fucked, set Sakura. Any of them up. They're all equally shit. But Free Rain True. manages to weave this blossoming relationship into its storyline that feels so natural. Right from the beginning, you can see that there are no mutual feelings. In fact, the two struggle with understanding each other while mm. they are adventuring. But as they spend more time together, you can see them slowly but surely start to understand, accept their small quirks, get comfortable around the other person, and most importantly, actually have banter and some chemistry with one another. Like everything else it does, the series actually takes its time to lay the crumbs down and let you see their relationship develop. Leading that episode was really good though. I agree with Giga. Huh? Like the Farron and Stark romance. Did I ever feel that it was forced? No. Because I felt like they were kind of at odds with each other. But it was kind of just like something behind the scenes. And every episode you kind of see them interacting more and more. And to the point where it feels like they're naturally actually growing together. right? And this episode kind of sealed the deal where they had to kind of just like act like fake royals and start doing dance and you know the ball stuff right that was pretty cool into this dance scene that had me screaming like a 15 year old yeah. girl who's about to publish her first wattpad fan fiction through what? nothing but pure references i don't understand what the fuck is this what, what was this what was this chapter one the starkening oh wattpad is probably a platform to make your own fucking um, fan fiction huh to come in reality but this is straight up just fanfic for stark and fern Gnart is his username, by the way. Go check him out. Wattpad had fan fiction. Through nothing but pure visual storytelling and micro expressions, you can see the exact moment Fern's view towards Stark shifts from a companion to a crush. The way her facial expression changes from nervousness to comfort to finally happiness. You don't need two pages of internal dialogue to spell out exactly what she was feeling. This is the kind of shit you normally only get to see conveyed in a live action film with real actors and it's executed so goddamn beautifully. I guess this is a great example of show don't tell in terms of the romance you know is progressing. No matter what Free Run tries, this show just does not seem to miss. Did I mention how hard the series goes? The action scenes action? are insane, yes. Oh, Richter made it in. This is a series that doesn't even need good action. And that's the thing. It doesn't need good action, but it has good action when it deserves it, right? This shit goes hard. Well, maybe as equally or even better than like Jujutsu Kaisen fire scenes, dude. For a show that is just about taking detours and just chilling, right? It's nice to know that the show can get serious in action terms if it wants to. Right now, we're going through a bloody tune in exam arc. And when that got introduced, My favorite I was arc. like, huh? Is that the right vibe to go for here? And yet, even in this action-intensive arc, it never feels like it forgets its identity. Even with all these new characters being added, it feels like they all have something distinctive to say that ties back to the learning ex- The fuck? Baldi and Mustachio's team? Caught the fucking bird on his gear? I- I- I forgot about this, okay. Experience our party is okay. going through. There is so much more I could talk about. The world building, the magic system, Evan Cole's godly soundtrack, the absolute coldest moment we got to see last year. But what I want to end this on is Himmel, who is aptly named. Because he is just him. Even he though his him. character essentially only exists in flashbacks outside of the beginning, you can feel his influence in every action that Free Ren takes, every lesson she learns, every time she grows as a character. And I think what makes him such a great character is that he just feels like a dude. Himmel epitomizes what a true hero should be. Not because he saved the world or defeated the demon lord. He Without a real sword, by the way. He's best to leave a positive influence wherever he goes. He's the friend we all want. The role model we want to be. He's charming. He's charismatic. He is the embodiment of everything. The story. He's actually a good male role model, huh? In an age where a bunch of desperate, lonely fucking incels can't riz up girls and fall into the alt-right pipeline asking Andrew Tate, please, how do I get bitches? And he says, hey, you just gotta buy my course. Course it'd be a fucking true sigma you have real alphas like himmel who doesn't need to impose themselves on a girl he doesn't need to tell a girl you know that you belong to me he's just there by himself appreciating freedom and even if he doesn't get that reciprocation back he's perfectly fine with it and bro actually died a virgin <laughs> it's kind of insane but honestly a pacifist style riz like this 
It is sad that his feelings did not get through to, you know, Frieden when he was alive. But I feel like these episodes where Frieden has more flashbacks and thinks back to Himmel, I think that she's starting to realize that, oh shit. Oh shit, did he have a crush on me? Oh, did I fuck that up? Oh, I didn't even fucking know. You know, this is like the perfect example of someone, you know, you were getting hit on, but you never realized. And like 10 years later, you start to realize, holy fuck, that was an opportunity completely missed, huh? What do we want to be? He's charming. He's charismatic. He is the embodiment of everything the story tries to remind you of. I don't think it's a coincidence. This story has hit so hard for so many of us and become the mega hit that it has. This came out in a time when I don't- I'm actually very impressed how Frieden has topped the charts because like in an era where people's attention spans are so fucking burnt, I'm surprised that a slow burn show like this came out so hard and caught the attention of so many people to the point it's actually rank one on my anime list. Now, those charts aren't the objective facts, but like, it's looking like it might even win anime of the year come 2024, right? The ranking season. So I'm really impressed at how the masses kind of reacted to Frieden, despite it's like not being as exciting as some of the other shows. You know what I mean? I don't think we've ever been more connected, yet distant to the people around us. We're so overstimulated day to day, constantly being barraged with informations and things. Okay, okay. I, I, I hate this example of like fucking boomers being like, back in my days, in a bus, nobody had their cell phones on. We were just appreciating each other. Shut the fuck up, boomer. Back in those days, you had a fucking useless, in, like inefficient newspaper you'd all be just fucking watching. Instead, now it's traded with a fucking smart device that's more efficient. That's all there is to it. There's no fucking difference, but the dopamine hit probably is harder. Day to day, constantly being barraged with informations and things you should care about. It sometimes feels like you don't want to care about anything, or at least you're exhausted about doing so. So seeing someone as emotionally distant as Freeren, learning to appreciate and understand the people around her is such a powerful reminder of what we should be valuing in our own lives. Time with the relationships that we have right now. Free Ren doesn't preach anything we don't already know. It's about the journey, not the destination. You shouldn't take for granted the time you're given. We've heard these so many times in our lives that they can turn into cliches in our heads and forget how true and valuable these lessons are. Ooh. Oh, it's that scene! The Himmel ring scene's so good! Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that video. I Thanks did. very much this month too. Author Curtis X. Y'all know what to do. Please go give Mr. Gigak a like on his video. Sub to his channel if you haven't. He's almost at 4 million subscribers, but I'm sure with your guys' help, we can help small anime channels like this grow even further beyond. Freedom has been a pleasant anime that we've been watching. And even if my audience doesn't seem to appreciate the slow burn and the nature of that, I think that it's actually a really great show. And I'm really excited to see the end of the Chunin Xan arc and hopefully second season announcement, man.